Beckers abound, dig fire around, snorting magic and moon dust. A riding dragon's flood, semen and blood, summons ready to bust. Crew of fucking beauties, we screw and do drugs all day and night. Healers and dealers, we die, clap and fuck our way into the fight. And I do electrify through my penis I rise in full supply I'm gonna ride cherry you can't deny Risk and rip that flip by the name Let's go Last time, the Risque Riff Raff We're celebrating awkwardly The nuptials of Ted Red Bootknocker And his bride, the lovely Dryder Drydaria With celebrants from both sides That is, until an old friend showed up Raylene, a ranger um, the group had run into back in Dino World and who subsequently ran off before they could turn her into the local sheriff. She showed up and apologized by throwing a green glowing gem into the group's new bar and then um, uh, ran off into the crowd. Upon picking up the group gemstone, both Ragnar and Redsum fell unconscious and had a vision about an island in the bitter sea that shaped like a giant sea turtle and felt compelled to go there. With the help of a member of the Lyrandar drag dragon marked house, the group boarded an airship called the Golden Dragon and headed toward the Bitter Sea. Before reaching the island, the airship was boarded by a wizard and his construct companion. The group was making good progress, defeating both the construct and the wizard, who seemed to be tied together to some sort of amulet. When the wizard saw he was losing the battle, his form changed to that of a giant black dragon, and he cast a reverse gravity spell on the group, pushed the ship out from below them, and, um, of course, you know, they uh, fell toward the ground, but that's okay, toward the water, but that's okay. They, they managed to, you know, save themselves and um, were able to get through quick thinking, be able to get back through, through dimension doors and flight and get back onto the uh, ship. And then he continued on to the island, which in turn out to be in reality an entire ecosystem built on the back of a giant sea turtle. And the group found a piece of the Draconic Prophecy burned into a wall. Uh, and a shield of the dragon, dragon turtle hidden behind a door that required the cooperation of Ragnar and Retsum to open. And now, the brave adventurers, aka you, are heading towards your destiny, um, per the prophecy's words, toward the childhood home of uh, Retsum Itit and Ragnar Scratchenheimer, the strange far off island of the Finger Bang, uh, uh, Fingerbone Island. And that's where our adventure begins today. As we start, the uh, golden dragon ascends ever higher into the air, so high that your ears begin to pop and slightly hurt. The only ones whose ears don't seem to be popping are Kala and Retsum, who seem to be okay with the altitude change. In fact, you know, they just seem to be relaxing to the breeze as you rise ever higher to Fingerbone Island. And in fact, you're just kind of just sitting there vibing and enjoying a nice, happy song. All right. So uh, I'm just going to give a little song about what we did last week. I just want to make sure you guys can hear me. Can you hear this? Copy. Yes, yes sir. sir. All right, here we go. So this song is uh, a parody of Running Up That Hill by Kate with the bushiest bush. It didn't hurt him. A little pinky up the bum. Didn't hurt, no Ragnar liked it. A little stimulation of the butt so it's only two two knuckles of red sums pinky. And we open the door, try to bash it and knock. And Capone tried to fuck some turtles. It was an airship we rode in our WA heel. Cala then pressed the magic button where Pinky felt good. All very much. <laughs> awesome. The first, <laughs> the first line I was dying laughing. Thank God I had my mic. That amazing muted. performance. Yeah. You're all just enjoying and uh, having a great time on the uh, airship. 
And then as you like, you know, get higher and higher on this airship, the skies are getting bluer, the deepest blue you've ever seen, just so amazingly bright blue. And it's at this point that you see Kala rise up from the ship and ascend into the air further and further away. This she's being pulled into the atmosphere by an unseen force. Or anyone can react, she's disappeared into the deep blue sky, into the deep clouds above. The only one who doesn't seem to be disturbed by what just happened is Retsum, who seems to be just enjoying the open breeze and kind of just, you know, banging back and forth to the music and almost as if nothing unusual just happened. And uh, as, you, as, as the airship just kind of gets closer and closer, you see an island in the distance. And the airship sits down on the edge of a giant precipice at the top of a very, very, very tall mountain. And there seems to be some kind of ledge there. And you see some tents and buildings scattered about, as well as an occasional nest. And it's there that you see Kala descend back from the sky and land on the edge in front of you, right in the middle of the ledge. And she no longer looks the same as she did before, where she once looked like a lovely, attractive elf. Now she has beautiful wings of purple and the appearance of something not quite of this world. And that's where you exit the airship and you greet your friend. Okay. Hello. Carla. Hello. What kind of black magic is this? Yeah. <laughs> what you talking about? I like the look. You like it? You like this? I was given like a pearl. A nice. I feel like I feel like we have one too many bird-like people in this group now. <laughs> that's a, that's a bird wings was it a thing? necklace? It was not a necklace. Okay. <laughs> These are really nice. I've given a you know it's a it's a nice gift. It's a nice gift to give <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> I mean, I was given this pearl up. I started flying up in the air, and then. Somehow I received this pearl in my hand, and but from something I knew from a, for some reason I felt like it was like a, an ancestor that I had. I don't know. I felt this connection with them, and then they give it to me. I squeeze it in my hand because I felt like I was. I didn't want to drop it. That all of a sudden, and then I just kind of like morphed into this, into my uh, true true self. All right, and as you're standing on the edge, uh, there on the edge of the ledge, and, and outside the airship. You see this bird-like humanoid with drab kind of feathers coming out and running toward the airship. And this, uh, this individual is, is, is making loud cackles and, and chirps unlike anything you've ever heard before, uh, most of you anyway. And, and, and the arms are, it's, it's little arms are waving and the feathers are flying and this bird-like female just is making all this noise and it gets louder and shriller as time goes on. This thing is just is cawing and cackling as it comes towards you. It's waving its arms, and, and, and all of a sudden, as it gets closer, kind of, uh, you know, it, it, the only one who really kind of understands all this cackling and cawing appears to, uh, to be a retsum, who's kind of getting a general sense of what this, uh, this, this, this raving, uh, cackling bird is, person is saying. Uh, he, he, uh, he was... He's, he says we can't park here, but uh, I, let, let me just talk to him. Let me let me see what I can what I can do. Uh, he really wants us to move like really really bad. But hold on, let me just let me. Crap! We didn't validate our parking. <laughs> <laughs> and the bird and the bird the bird person just continues to just get more animated and squawks and chirps and suddenly you see the bird person stop right in, in spot in the spot where they where they are and 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 it squats down it lets out one huge giant squawk and all of a sudden you just see a big huge bright blue egg show up right underneath this this creature just all of a sudden, that, that explains why he was so ornery And then all of a sudden, another bird-like person comes out, um, again, with kind of a drab, drab feathers, and, and looks around at all of you and, and says in, in the common tongue, oh, don't mind Carolina. She's just mad because, she, well, 
pre- pre- preoccupied for a while and unable to take any trips to the open sky. Her, her mate sat on the last egg and broke it, so she refuses to let him go anywhere near this one. And, um, and, and so, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, Redsom has this kind of a recognition of, of, of this female, the secondary f- female that came up and uh, kind of acts like, you know, he kind of, kind of knows who she might be. Is, is that what happened to you, mate? Like, did, did your egg get cracked while you're, you're being born? Is that, that's what's going on? <laughs> there was some rumors that went around the village for a while, but don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you really should move that ship, though, she says. Otherwise, you know, Carolina won't stop squawking about it. No one will get any rest. So our ship being out of place is weird, but some people we just met just dropping an egg in front of us is just commonplace, or what am I missing here? I think we need to uh, learn this new culture. It's going to be very foreign to us, but I'm excited to learn about it. Uh, With that, Matsya, Delandria comes down and um, says, okay, hold on. Um, Okay, it's all right. We we need to take the rest of the, uh, um, the, the passengers, you know, to the destinations anyhow. So we'll go take care of that, and uh, in a few days we'll uh, take you all back to Flame Keep. So uh, that's the, you know the the co-pilot. Okay, thank so, you for the lift. Safe travels. So yeah, so with that they uh, they, they they she nods to the group and she heads back to the airship, and then the airship takes off in the distance. I just turned back. And I said, "See, we were le- they were leaving anyway." Uh, I guess. Uh, hi. Uh. Rishaha, how are you? So, she says, she knows that she kind of has this kind of big personality. She goes, <laughs> so, what brings the daring Retsam Yatit back home after all this time, and with friends nonetheless? Uh, well, She's chicken on out. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I had some things that I had to just come back home and, uh, look into. Uh, it's been a while since I've been uh, gone. Just thought I'd uh, come back up. Can a, guy, can a guy just come home? <laughs> of course, of course. Um, my name is Rishaha. Some and I go way back, don't we? <laughs> Remember that time we replaced Grand Priest Zessa's water with Windshire Rainbow Wine? I mean, he was convinced it was a sign from the angels for about a week. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm sure your friends have never seen an Aracocra village before, so uh, while outsiders, outsiders are not welcome beyond this area, I'd love to have you and your friends join me in my tent here for a, for a meal, you know, over on the ledge. Welcome to the outskirts of Adelphia. Follow me. And Rishaha leads you to a small tent um, toward the back of the ledge. And you notice that there's kind of a gate built into the back of the side of the mountain, but it's, you know, not accessible. Um, and you, and, and, and there's no way you can get to it, but, you know, she takes you to her tent and her tent's kind of small, but comfortable with a small nest of straw and some cloth strips in one corner and a, a box of healing supplies. And, and she goes over to the box and she, ha- you know, comes out back with some berries and some fruits and some bread. She hands some to each of you. And then she sits down on a little nest in this corner. She goes, I take care of all the women who come here to lay eggs and the others who land here and stay outside to celebrate the mingling of Serania with Eberron. Or to go visit Serania itself while it draws near. Have you ever been to the Azure Sky? I'll imagine she has. And she looks over in Kala's direction. Yeah. Yeah. Good answer, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, many angels are from Serania. Ones with the beautiful wings. Yeah, and they're pretty. Where they're, they're from. Yeah, they're pretty nice. I got. The, I just got these. I feel like I just came from there. Just oh. There. Well, I'm sure, it, it, you know, you loved it there. It, it, it's beautiful. The sky is it, it's infinite. And there's so many places to fly. Um, we love going there, and this is our favorite time of the year because we can travel so easily back and forth to Serania and, and, and fly peacefully and, and freely throughout the infinite sky. So, um, you know what? There's also this really cool university there. You've probably been there, a place of peace and learning. 
and, and and then there's also you know it's a good place to look for answers and, and there's also like it's really cool marketplace up there where you can get some neat items if you're into that sort of thing and you have the right price you know i found something there uh, let me let me go get it for you and she heads toward the ledge and she digs through a wooden box and she pulls out a bright glowing green gemstone one very very similar to the one that uh that you got at the bar but not quite the same she stands over by the ledge with this gemstone she's showing it to all of you hey Retson, oh, i dare you to touch it, it. I don't want to touch it. it. Go over a little closer to the ledge. She's over by, by the ledge right now. Where the box was. All you guys are kind of over. Yeah, you're over there, like right on the little ledge, edge of the ledge. T touch it, Ratsum. Touch it. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> catch or touch it. Yeah, she's Here's playing cat. She's showing it. She's playing around with it. And she's, and she's all of a sudden, she's tossing the gym back and forth in her talons and kind of showing you it. And she's like, oh, isn't this cool? This is so neat. She's tossing it back and forth. And it's flying through the air, and all of a sudden, it just goes over the ledge. You see it disappear into the clouds below. Okay, I want to die. I want to die. It's gone forever now. We lose so many things over that ledge, but none of us want to go down and look for it. Hey, Retsum, you went down there once, right? When you were young? You wouldn't want to go down there and retrieve it for me, would you? Uh, why do you always have to play games, but... Yes, well, I think we can we can go down there and get it. Can I make an insight check and see, like, this looks like this is totally intentional that she's toying with them. Do I, is that what I gain from this? You don't detect anything that she's doing intentionally. Okay. Just uh, a big personality and, and not probably not too much going on up top. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, this, really listen, this WD, Great. I can fill you in. This is normal. This is. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm very weirded out by all this going on right now. You descend down the mountain and you arrive at a small clearing at the outside the entrance into the mountain. You see several huts and a couple of small watchtowers outside the cave entrance. Neither the huts nor the watchtowers seem occupied when you arrive. Um, at the clearing, but you do hear screams coming from inside the cave. You see a couple of people, you know, running out. Some very frightened, young, kind of cat-looking, feline-looking creatures coming out of the cave, with fur on the back of their necks, standing up, just stiff. And there, and about half a minute later, you see this huge, cresting wave with eyes come rolling across the ground towards you. All for initiative. Oh boy. Uh, oh, so okay. to... <laughs> to Hell's yeah, baby. Nat 20. Ooh. Nice roll. Nice roll. <laughs> Nat 1, nice. So. To be clear, yeah. there was a wave of eyes. Yeah. A wave of water eyes? With eyes. Should, I, uh, should I bring that out now, Kira? Water. Yeah, yeah, bring the, yeah, put the water out there. Oh, that's going to be all rimsy if it's a water creature. <laughs> Why does that have to be? Because it's water. I'm not water. No, lightning. <laughs> but this is cats, so. <laughs> Oh, you got to attack the cats. Has oh, anybody got a big <laughs> ball of yarn? Actually... <laughs> actually, I think the cats... I think the actually, cats are somebody does have a ball of yarn. <laughs> Ori? I'm sorry, rats. What? Oh, and Kira, what is the, uh, what is the enemy role? One? Okay. So, so Bondo will, oh, sorry, uh, Ragnar will be up first, and uh, I'll do the rest of them while you're, while you're going. Okay, we've got a water monster. Yes. For this one, I am going to go up and to the left of it, if I can get within... 30 feet. Okay. 
And I will use one sorcerer point to transmute a spell. And I am casting fifth level lightning dick. That is a deck save 17. I like Ooh, that. Nice. Ooh. Nice. Would it be super effective? I mean... Creature yeah. is able to uh, manage to uh, dodge some of this. It's uh, definitely safe. Uh, it was 27, so half would be probably 13, right? Rounded down. Good start, good start. All right, uh, Rat Ratsum is up next. Uh, All righty then. Uh, let's see. I am then going to uh, fly on up here uh, over to the right side. Kind of flank on either side of this thing. Kind of like above the boulder-ish, I guess, is where I I want to be there. Yeah. And then uh, what I'm going to do is give it a shot with Peacemaker. Let's see what I can do here. Uh, ooh, a 21. I assume that's uh, going to be pretty good, right? Nicely done. Yes. Able nice. To it. Some damage with that. Uh, and then I am going to also throw a dart. See if this hits. Eh, 15. If not, I can use a key point here. Yeah, that, that, that actually did hit it. That hit it? Okay. Slightly resistant to uh to to last two, but you're okay. You did hit it. Okay. She's got a dart in her neck. <laughs> uh, and then uh, what I'm gonna do now is then take a key point and take the dodge action, and that will end right. my turn. All right, nicely done. Uh, yeah, RWA is up next. Yeah, we're gonna uh, cast a uh, uh, be well, bitches, and I'm gonna give. A plus four to attacks and saves to Capone, myself, and the legendary Ted Red Bootknocker. And I will Thank move, I'm going to move to my right about 30 feet to the corner of that house, to our other corner. No, no, other one. Sorry. Right there. Yep. That's good. Right there. And that is my turn. All right, so that is a, a plus three on saves. One uh, d four on Sorry. saves and attack rolls for uh, Ted Red Bootknocker, Capone, and myself. Okay. Just writing that down there. Okay, cool. And uh, next up is uh, Faceless. Uh, so I'm going to cast Explode Curse on the water beast and i'm just gonna go charge straight on her in its face and i'm gonna whack it 23 for hit I'm guessing that hits. 15 damage I'll smack it again and i missed and for bonus action i am gonna activate maddening hex and do another five damage. Okay. And that's the end of my turn. All right. And next up is Capone. All righty. So I am going to go up and land right beside uh, Faceless. And I I'm going to look over at Retsum. I'm going to tell him a little. It's like a little inside joke. Basically, it says Bash Brothers. But I'm going to say it in his native tongue. And it goes a little something like this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he understands. He gets He knows what I'm trying to say. My dialect's a little rusty. My, my you know, it's been a while since I've uh, practiced the tongue. But uh, it was close enough. And then I'm going to look at this beauty right in her personality. And then I'm her big personalities. And uh, I am going to rage in her face. Then I am going to attack her 
in her big personalities. 16 to hit. All right, you sliced her. You some Your axe go through a little bit, and it's like you see some water slice through and a splash off, but you definitely did some damage. All right, hit her with a good old 10. And uh, we will be doing that again, and I'm aiming right in the middle of her big personalities. Oh, yeah. You slice right through those personalities. <laughs> and uh, 11. And that will be the end of my turn. All right, nicely done. And after that breast reduction, we next have Kala. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I was thinking that I could go ahead, since she is, you know, a water, I could go ahead and uh, throw some uh, thunderclaps your ways, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, okay. so, uh, <laughs> so you guys prepared? Yeah, all right. Good well. thing I'm wearing a rubber. <laughs> yeah I put on a condom and <laughs> keep me safe alright so uh, I need to get a little closer so I'll kind of like fly she's... hobble over there <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's even going to get the cats the cats are going to get absolutely Let me out. <clears throat> So uh, the kittens are very, very frightened at this point. Their hair is like they're like in that cat stance where they're like really scared at this point, and they're <laughs> like, <laughs> hair is like completely and totally up straight, straight up. I warn you guys every time. You guys always run up there. You know it's coming. <laughs> what do you mean? So I'm a, I'm the tank. I'm a tank, and I'm up. <laughs> All right, throw it down. Uh, got a 32 damage. Ooh, Dex. That's a Dex save, correct? Dex save is uh, 16, con 16. Oh, con shit. Con? Okay. Okay. Con, you get plus 4 uh, d4 to your roll. All right. So I got a 19. So I'm good. As did I. As did I. 30, 32 damage, was that correct? Really? Yes, 32 damage, guys. Uh, I mean, I, took, I got a keeper took... healer employed. <laughs> Three yeah, yeah. of the uh, of the four <laughs> uh, poor kit, little tabaxi kittens are now unconscious on the ground. Oh. Uh, <laughs> one is is okay, uh, still standing at least, and okay, but the others are uh, yeah unconscious. And so uh, I'm gonna walk backwards and uh, like I did my job. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Check the news feed on Twitter for Peter right now. <laughs> what was the damage? 32. 32. 32, so I'm resistant anyway. I took the, I took the full damage. That hurt. 16. I feel the knife in my back. <laughs> I mean, is it close? Did, did, how, how did the water, how did the water beating do? Water being oh. uh, did not save, so the water being was fully damaged. Nice. nice hit. Oh, nice gone. hit. So, Ori, uh, so uh, uh, Retsum got hurt, and okay, everyone Ragnar else is good. Also got hurt. I took half as well. Okay. Oh, if we got the save, we still take half. Yep. If you okay. saved, you take half. So Unless you were okay. resistant, and then it's nothing. Or quarter. Got it, okay. So we got uh, 16 damage for uh, component me. I actually think it's quarter damage if you saved. Since I got attacked from Renzi, can I do a reaction against Renzi? <laughs> <laughs> no attacking your team. It's starting. <laughs> it's starting. <laughs> team is turning on each other. I tell you guys, I'm never able to use it because you guys go up there and put your, you know, your dicks right on it. <laughs> nice. Yes. Bad cats. <laughs> Shop fair me. There you go. Kind of, yeah. Enjoy, guys. Heal up. All right. After that uh, incredible 
incredibly destructive attack. It's now uh, Tedred's turn. So for my turn, because I just saw three kittens get demolished, um, they're unconscious on the ground. I'm going to cast my Mage Hand. I'm going to use my Mage Hand to round up the three kittens. And I'm going to carry the fourth kitten with me. And because I am a robot, I don't know if you know this, but robots don't really like water. So I'm going to run as far away from this as I can because I don't want to touch the water. I don't want to short circuit. don't want to get any rust. And I'm going to take the kittens with me and keep them safe, hidden behind me with some of the other tabaxi on the side here. And I will just keep my mage hand right here, playing the drum. And the last thing I'm going to do is cast, uh, as a bonus action, uh, Bardic Inspiration. So what that means is uh, Retsum, as a bonus uh, sorry, uh, Retsum, uh, you're going to hear my guitar play and get really pumped up. And you can now add a D10 for an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Whenever you want. You're you're inspired. All right. And that is the end of my but turn. It's just and... once. Yeah. Just once, yeah. Yep. All right. And that's the end of my turn. And it is now the enemy's turn. Yeah, you see this water creature kind of a uh, zoom over and it goes into uh just kind of squeezes its little water watery body over into uh Capone's space. And uh, Capone needs to make a uh, a strength saving throw. Ha <laughs> ha no problem here. That would be a 22 as I flex. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, it also uh, just grabs a hold of you and kind of just kind of slams you, picks you up, slams you into the ground and uh, does 13 damage. I'm aroused. I'll take that. I'll take that 13 damage uh, with a smile. Everyone likes to slam it. It's over. All right. And with that, it is now Ragnar's turn. All right. So that did not go as well as I thought on the first turn. Uh, we will change things up. I will. Once again, use a sorcery point. We will transmute this time to ice or cold, if you will. And instead, we will be casting a cold lightning bolt, deck save 17. Okay, so you, 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 you see the lightning bolt just kind of smash into this uh, water creature and all of a sudden it gets, it, it gets kind of just kind of gets a little bit kind of cold and freezing and it, you see it like kind of just get a little bit slower, it kind of looks like it's moving kind of a little bit in slow motion and then it takes the, uh, the full brunt of the lightning bolt against it and you can see it's now not only it's like slower but it's also very visibly hurt. Nice shot. Nice. Yeah. Very nice damage. Uh, I will end my turn there. All right. And uh, next up is Retsam. All right. I am going to uh, load up Peacemaker uh, with one of my uh, attack actions and then fire Peacemaker right into this thing. Ooh, next 24. Does 15 damage. I will use another key point. Taking the dodge action. And that ends my turn. All right. Nicely done. Next up is RWA. Am I within 60 feet of the kittens or cats to the other side? Uh, you might need to go a couple steps forward, I think. You're about 70 right, feet, I would Move say. me a little bit towards Renzi, a little bit further back. There you go, to where I'm in the range of them. And there's four cats over there? 
There are four kittens. There are four okay. kittens. We are unconscious, and one is... Okay, I'm going to... Level three, mass uh, mass cure wounds. Uh, four of them will be on the kittens, and the other two will be on Faceless and Capone. And I'll roll my dice right now for that. Save the kitten. Uh, everybody in that group, Faceless, Capone, and the four kittens, heals 13 hit points right now. Thank you. They are and... the two unconscious kittens get up and they're kind of like, you know, visibly shaken up, but they're like, you know, kind of you know, stretching and yawning. And you see them put their paws kind of go out like this. And they're like, oh, I'm going to give you a smile, a little bit of a smile and a, and a little purr from the Whip side. It. I give them a wink and a little symbolic cat claw. And that is the end of my turn. That was really cute. I liked it. Uh, Faceless is up next. I am going to swing at this big beast. Thank you. 28 to hit. 13 damage. And then hit it one more time. What is up with the natural ones on my second roll? It's the second time. <laughs> um, and then I'll use bonus action to do maddening hex for another 5 damage. Two natural ones tonight, guys. You sliced and missed on the last one, but you got your uh, extra damage in there. So. All right. Next up is uh, Capone. All righty. So I look at uh, Circumciser, which is my beautiful axe. And uh, you know it's about to get wet, baby. So we're going to swing. And uh, 18 to hit. Nice. Sliced and diced, then you see it kind of go through, and you see it kind of hit the uh, the edge of her arm, and you hit it. It hits pretty strong, and um, yeah, that uh, that pretty much, you know, as you see it slice, and you see her body just kind of, you know, dissipate into a big, humongous, uh, you know, pool of water as it dissolves into a massive pool of water. Describe your uh, your killing blow again. Yeah, her. she did. Okay, so now that she is just all wet. I take Circumciser and just pound it in her. I'm slashing her with, with, with Circumciser over and over, slicing and dicing, getting her wetter and wetter, and just splash her all over the place. And we're all soaked. We are all wet, and uh, she is done. She's gone. See you later. We're all done. All right. Good job. <laughs> The, uh, the t young tabaxi children come back and give you a huge hug. They run over and, uh, and, and give Capone a big, huge hug and then and, and kind of just realize you're wet. And then they kind of just, ugh, okay, <laughs> they kind of back off a little bit. But um, they're really thrilled. And then they usher you all into the cave area. And as you pass by the entrance to the cave, you see the shattered remains of the gemstone that Rishhaha dropped on the, onto the ground. It gets kind of shattered into pieces. And then uh, you can go into the, uh, the cave area now. Yo, Retson, why do your people Ooh. keep throwing shit down here? Uh, hey, does that mean that that monster might have spawned from that gemstone? Can we break that on? <laughs> it, it's entirely possible. Do we still have think... that on? Capone's no, the other one broke last week, I think, too, didn't it? No, no, Capone kept it. Oh, he's going to break it at some um, point, so but just I give it time. faceless that the kids were running from that other direction past the gym uh, i just thought we could have spawned another monster to kill yeah they're gonna go into the uh the cave area mm -hmm. now the inside so you walk into a full-on city built inside uh, inside of a mountain basically and uh, you see buildings in the distance across a large bridge, and some of the buildings look fairly well damaged by uh, what appears to be probably the recent visit by the water elemental. And you also see, you know, large boxes and some comfortable looking pallets and beds laying around in various places on the ground. And, uh, and, and, and this, of course, this huge bridge that's kind of in front of you, and it's kind of just a this really nice little city laid out inside of the uh, cave. And of course, this all looks extraordinarily familiar to one of you. Um, and, uh, that's pretty much it. Decide where you want to go. Retsum, what's your take on this, buddy? 
It's a cave. Don't ask the chicken about this place. He knows nothing about it. Oh, is this is this Ragnar's domain? I'm sorry, Ragnar. What's the deets on this, brother? Uh, quiet, uh, thriving mini met- met- metropolis inside of a cave. Uh, there's some jerk named Bjorn that lives here. Um, yeah, he's kind of the reason I left, but uh. I feel like we should go check out some of the shops before we, you know, interact with the locals. I want to hear do, more about why um, you left. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah why is this leave, joke? Bro? Do you need us to um, go pay him a visit? No? Uh, so, so Bjorn inherited leadership of the city and, you know, my dad was a necromancer. My mom was a cleric and developed all these <laughs> storm powers and he didn't understand them. So he was like, get the fuck out. Oh, is he like a bully? Uh, I wouldn't say a bully per se. There was a point we were friends, but he doesn't understand the occult. Should I go shoot him? Okay. Well, you know, well, I, I'll lay low. If you don't like the way it's going out, you give me a wink and I'll rough him up, okay? Uh, I don't think we'll have to rough him up at all. Okay. He's just a jerk that doesn't understand. All right, man. I'm going to follow your lead, brother. Offer still stands. <laughs> yeah, we can make him understand. Out, yeah. I mean, I will say that the people in here are not necessarily overly fond of the chicken folk from up top. People love me. Your people keep throwing garbage down here. <laughs> I see your point. I mean, way back when, somebody threw a giant piece of metal with a piece of wood strapped to the end of it, and you're still carrying it. <laughs> that is true. That is true. But, uh, you know, if it wasn't for that. And I've had to fix it now. Like. I, I, I will say, you, you, are, you do come in handy. So... Uh, I'll, I'm just going to go check out some of the shops, and then eventually I'll meet up with that jerk. I think you two need to get a room. That's what I'm thinking yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. well, giving him a couple of handies. I think there's a little bit of a pinky-related resentment here, but I can understand it. Digits have been exchanged, okay? Don't worry. <laughs> so which way are you all heading at this point? Great. I'm looking for uh, I'll check out the, yeah, the rooms here, or? Yeah, you can check out the rooms there if you want to. Uh... All right, I'm going to check out this room right here. Right. Okay. Walk into that little room. You see that there is some nice little uh, catnip plants there and um, fish along there. It's kind of just a little uh, pretty little garden area with some catnip growing. Um, we should take that catnip. It could come in handy later. <laughs> it, it's possible. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I, I promise you it's not magical catnip. Oh. Do well, you we like it? Calm you down. Yeah, we might need it. Does it work on you? <laughs> uh, yeah. I-, I regret to inform you, I'm already carrying catnip. <laughs> <laughs> you got the nip, and you've been holding out on us. He likes to get a little I'm also, frisky. I'm also carrying milk and yarn. I mean, I'm just a little bit upset that you haven't shared this until now, but it's okay. It's okay. We can push on. We can push on. I will be taking some of that nip later, though. No, don't worry. I'll roll you nip, up some. You know? Okay, sweet. You, you get me some papers, and I'll roll you up some nip. Yeah, let me just... Rest on oh, you got I some got, papers, right? If you need papers, <laughs> I got papers. I got plenty of papers. All right. All right. Head across the bridge. All right. Do we want to grab a quick nip first, or are we, we, we going across, <laughs> right? We're going? All right, we can, do, we can nip later. Nip later. I, yeah, I usually nip after I do bridges. It's just a thing that I've always <laughs> yeah, done. probably a smart idea. As you cross the bridge down below, you see a huge abyss beneath you. It makes you a bit uneasy, but you manage to get across okay. Yeah, probably doing catnip before that might not be such a good idea. I don't know. I don't know. I think it might have calmed me down. <laughs> yeah, it might have. You see two buildings on uh, either side of you. And, you know, some skulls and some beautiful... Uh, Areas over there, things, some some benches to sit on, and uh, some more buildings over there beside you. Uh, building to the uh, one side, 
the right reads Office of the Chieftain. More like Wait. Office of the Jerk. All right, so we want to just stay away from that guy, right? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's yeah. go, to the, go to the left then? To I'm going to go with... the, uh, Facing forward to your left is the Office of the Chieftain. To the right is a... Uh, okay. Can I go meet Bjorn? I'm going to go okay, kick in his door. Yeah, let's go <laughs> kick in his door, uh, Kala. Yeah. I have a bone to pick with Bjorn. Uh, I oh, hear I he's been... Uh, yeah, I feel like he's been uh, causing problems. Uh, I would advise against it. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I'll come with you too. I don't know. If, let's go. I don't know if this is what Bondo wants, or with, if this is what uh, Ragnar wants, okay. guys. I think, I think we should. Uh... I, I would advise against it because I will point out I'm not the only magic wielding Tabaxi. I'm just the only one that got kicked out. Okay. Yeah. So we got. Well, as you enter this point. office, you notice that it is unoccupied at the moment. There's Ran a desk. Second. Second. <laughs> Sorry. There's a desk covered in a messy with in a, with a messy amount of parchment and a crude wooden sign that says the name Bjorn. And uh, you know, it looks like it's been kind of carved out with some sharp claws. Um, and uh, if you search through the parchment, you know you can see there's some bunch of parchment, and you see this lovely bag of uh, of unopened chips, Whoa. a couple of bags of unopened chips Hold on there. It. Whoa, 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 um, what's wrong? I am going to rage, uh, I am tearing this office apart, uh, I, we, we take the chips and we force Capone to eat them, I see this, uh, this evil bag of chips on the desk, and, uh, <laughs> can we uh, can we take this bag and shred it up? Can, what can we do with this bag of chips here? Eat you can eat it. Eat yeah, what's the worst part about someone else eating your your chips? Let's eat them. <laughs> um, a twist us. Uh, I just want to point out that these are a delicacy in this area. I'm just glad there's a sign really that says "Don't fuck the chips." <laughs> you know the chips will fuck why don't you cat. I'm actually a little bit afraid of these bag of chips here <laughs> I uh, don't, don't know what kind of magical powers they have uh, I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna avoid the bag of chips I'm gonna slowly back away from the bag of chips Bruno, I would like I can to take the, the bag, bag of chips can, can I take the bag of chips is this a pantry <laughs> yeah <laughs> get out of the pantry <laughs> I can help with the situation. Can I do detect magic on these chips to put everyone's mind at rest? I don't know if you, you can trust those chips. anything magical about the chips other oh. than, you know, obviously they have the they're flavors, um, that they're nice and, you know, great flavors. But, um, yeah, that's about it. You know, but there are, you know, you could definitely look at around the desk and see what's there or look around, whatever. Can yeah, the chips the themselves just seem like they're, they're just normal chips, but then again... No, they are twistos, so you never know. Can I look at the book Back underneath the, the chips? Unexpected. Twistos twist. <laughs> you can. Hey, Capone, pick up the bag of chips. I'm going to take my axe, and can I just maybe chop the, this bag of chips into a million pieces? Are you sure you want to do that, though? I'm uh, too sure if I want to touch this bag of chips. <laughs> I am terrified of this bag of chips. <laughs> I, I'm worried think, that there's a triple eviction coming. I think you have to listen to your gut. I made a perception check, 18, for looking anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, uh, just opening it up here. The, uh, over to the desk. And see, okay. I mean, I was, I was looking at that, so... Want to take one sec while you guys are checking stuff out. Ragnar, if you need me to grab this bag, I will grab this bag. I will do this for you. Do you want to pick them up? Around the uh, the room for anything else? Any chance? Oh, oh! I did a perception check. Eighteen. Okay, you the notice room. that there is a a map on the other side of the room that's uh, kind of leading to an, an area that's also on the island. And uh, Kala has found this over here, so you can, uh, of course, you know, read on your own. 
Dear Bjorn of Fancy Feast, you are quarterly invited to a dinner at Castle Wishbone. Please bring this invitation forth of Raham. YK1000. Hmm. Hmm. You notice that the map leads to um, the locale of Castle Wishbone. Uh, what what did we say was in the other building? We haven't checked that out yet. Well, I want to go check that out. As oh, you're no, investigating this room, you see that the kittens uh -huh. show up again briefly, and uh, and they say, um, if you're looking for the chieftain, he's not here. He went missing about a week ago. I wonder if the bird people got him. And they look over at you know at at at, at you know some and they kind of just like oh no no that's silly i bet it was the pointy eared people and then look over at you know at kala and a couple of them like uh no 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 it, it, it was the creepy the people with the creepy skull faces yeah the creepy skull paste people got him i bet and they run and they start giggling and they run off and chase each other and start just running off and, and playing together Meow. man they are they're 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 messy they just think we all did it uh, it's probably because you keep throwing crap down here. You know, like I said, sometimes you just need to get rid of something. The easiest Can way I is take is this down. invitation with me. Steal it. Uh, that might not be a bad idea. I want to steal it. Oh, steal, steal it. it. Oh, yeah. Mine now. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so before we do anything rash, let's go check out that other building. Yeah, I'll go with you. All right, yeah, well, uh, well, well, Faceless and Kala are uh, searching the office, and Capone is quivering in the corner, staring at a bag <laughs> of chips. We can go into the other room and check it out. Would appear to be a bedchamber. Uh, let me do, I guess, a, a little perception check, I guess, right, to see if I see anything. Yeah, sounds good. That sounds like a good starting point. Ooh, 21. Sorry. Yeah, you see over in the corner, you see an amulet with, um, with underneath some turtles. And um, you see the amulet's kind of just glowing a little bit, but it's like a, it's like a little, just a little, like a little necklace of some sort, but it's like underneath these, this pretty little turtle statue. Ooh, shiny. I want to grab it. Uh... Do you? Yes. Go to touch it, and all of a sudden, you know, you feel this. Uh, just ro roll a roll a uh, a dexterity check. Dex, okay, okay. If you can get it safely. Twenty one. Okay. Well, you're able to kind of grab a hold of it, um, but you do take about you know ten points of damage as it kind of just gives you this kind of shock. System. You take it. Yikes. Hurt a little bit, but I got it. <laughs> but you're able to get a hold of it, at least. I got it, though. Yeah, but what is it? Oh, yeah, what, <laughs> what is it? It's an amulet. It glows. I like it. <laughs> it is a, is a necklace of some sort. Uh, I don't have uh, any way of detecting any magic or anything like that. Would, so, would uh, you like me to... I've oh, already got an arcana on the way. Oh, well, thank you. 22 on the arcana. All right. Well, you determine that this uh, necklace or amulet is, um, appears to be something that, like, can it, you know, it, it may make you, may make you feel a little bit better, a little bit healthier, perhaps. Oh. Uh, I definitely need that. But you also notice that, like I said, it, it can, it, it's also very, very specific as to wear it very specific to where you wear it as who, who? can wear it oh A type who? of person can wear it Ooh, oh so since you took damage from grabbing it maybe it's not you or maybe it will heal me <laughs> no, or it just caused 10 damage i'm gonna put it on <laughs> <laughs> you're glutton for punishment like the pain Putting it on your neck? Yes. I hope it's damaged. Let me do this. Again. 
He wouldn't be doing this if there wasn't a healer around. <laughs> all right. So as you as you take the necklace, you kind of put it around your neck, and all of a sudden you just feel like you know it's kind of like you know those little shock collars they have for 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 dogs, you know, and, and you kind of get that feeling <laughs> around your neck, and you kind of just, oh, you okay. I take it off. I take it off. I take it off. I want it off. <laughs> so you, you take, you're taking like you know you take another you know 15 points of damage. And you're trying to just, oh, God. just, just grab it, but you're you're, you're your hands and you're just kind of, you know, your feathers are flying everywhere as you're trying to get this off over your, over your, uh, your feathers, over your hood, over your, and he's like, all of a sudden you get it off and you have to shake it off and you like throw it on the ground. <laughs> and then I'll run over and kick it away. Uh, all right. So I, I, I'm not even playing. I want to pick it up. I mean, right? have, have fun with it, but, uh, <laughs> if that's your thing. No yeah, judgment here, colors, you know. but <laughs> that was it works for some intense. People. Well, <laughs> you forget I have a natural resistance to lightning. Roll, it, roll a dex oh. check. Oh, you're going to love this then. It's going to be a real pleasure. 17. All right. You, you kind of pick it up. You grab it off the ground. You kind of see it. You know, just a little sparks. Does some sparks. Kind of shakes. There's a little sparking. It doesn't really harm you at all. I just kind of just, you know this little thing and it just kind of glows and starts shakes a little bit and sparks but it doesn't really do any damage to you at all you're able to pick it up safely stupid amulet all right well we've tried this once so i want to put it on all right take it you put it over your little ears you put it over your over your neck and onto your neck Again, it's kind of just, you know, kind of doing this little staticky spark. And some of the, the neck hairs, you know, the little, little fur on the back of your neck kind of stick up a little bit. Then all of a sudden, it, it, it kind of lays back down and everything's okay. And all of a sudden, you feel much, much kind of healthier for, for, for some reason. You just feel like, you know, you kind of can all of a sudden got this burst of, 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 of you know, vibrance and, and energy and health. Ooh. That, that's not what happened to me. <laughs> I mean, I I... some, and I'm like, "You dumbass!" And I give him a cure, uh, level two, wound spell, mm-hmm. and I'll heal him. Uh, Twelve points. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. See, this is what happens. When we just keep trying the same methodology. We tried it with the gemstone. What were the odds it would happen twice? You know, that's a... That's a good question. I'll I'll just let you keep taking the lead on these things. (laughs) Well, you guys are doing that. Um... I just get this feeling that I need to go comfort Capone in the other room. So I'm going to run across to the other building and just walk up to Capone and go, It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, don't mind me. I'm just curled up in the in a ball in the corner. <laughs> Sting as far away from those twistos as I can. <laughs> But I appreciate the uh, the cheer up song. It it worked. It worked. It okay, worked. that's good. That's Thank good. you. I'm also uh, real quick just gonna do a, a little healing on myself by using two key points for. Uh, do you, do you need more? I can top you off four. if you want. So that would be nine more for me. Uh, I mean, like I'm, I'm down, uh, you know, twenty. I'm okay. All right, this no save your key points. I'll do it again. Here you go, buddy. Oh my gosh, I rolled a one. All right, you get <laughs> uh, sixteen hit points on that one. Hey, that's that's almost full. That was a terrible roll too. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So uh, as a. Uh... Redsum is, is is healing himself. He looks back over at those uh, turtles again and kind of gives them like the evil eye over there. He also notices that as he's doing that, he sees a, a little bit of, you know, I don't know, some drops of blood and things like that kind of over there in the same general vicinity as, as if, you know, maybe something uh, a foul has happened uh, 
to uh to poor Bjorn. Ooh. Uh Bonda, did you see this? Uh, uh, Ragnar, did you see this? Oh, uh, what what did I see? There's, there's blood over here, man. Well, why did you put it there? <laughs> yes, I just go around squirting blood everywhere. Well, I thought maybe it happened when you put the the amulet on. No, no, no. Hmm. Perhaps we need to investigate this further. I think some I think some bad things went down here. I can do an investigation. But I mean bad things blood. happen to bad bad people sometimes, so that's Yeah. That's true. Good. Uh, isn't this making you feel happy that something bad happened to him? Uh. <laughs> Though who hey. will have the most motive? Red Ragnar. Looks at the uh... Ted Red looks at the uh, the blood over there and notices that um, it is indeed probably, you know, it does belong to some sort of, of tabaxi, probably, but um, not necessarily, maybe not necessarily Bjorn's blood. Might be some other tabaxi's blood, mm. in fact. Um, Ragnar, do you have it? Ragnar, do you have any other friends who were here? Uh, nobody in particular. Okay, so we're not worried about this at all? Uh, I mean, I'd be worried. I just, I don't know whom it may belong to. Maybe you, you should also, investigate. Sorry. Yeah. And then you also uh, get the impression that perhaps uh, this, uh, this blood might be tied to... Uh, Something related to uh, perhaps where Bjorn was going, or uh, what uh, be something that happened to him or happened to someone that he knew. You also kind of get I don't know maybe just looking at the blood, it looks very very strange to you. You know, just from your 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 bardic knowledge of of of, of you know what little bit of medicine you've ever looked at in your life um, back in the war. You kind of notice that maybe, you know, even it might be a little bit tainted with, you know, not even quite even normal blood. It might be a little tainted, maybe even kind of vampiric, strange, or some kind of just not even natural blood. Vampiric. So that lich? Is there anyone in, is there any one of us that knows anything about vampires? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't think there's a Van Helsing in this uh, village. <laughs> I know theories, but that's, uh, that's that's about it. I might have something. Let me. Uh, I'll do a religion check. And see what I can come up with. Oh, that was a bad roll. A really bad roll. An oh, eight. Because uh... anything. Uh, DM. Does, does anybody have any garlic? Don't learn anything about the religion necessarily, other than you do know that there is, there are people in the area, you know, on this island that you've heard about, it might be uh, related related in some way to the blood of Vol, and also even to like not necessarily even what, maybe the the nicer parts of the blood of Vol, um, but to perhaps even the blood of Vol that is more related to the undead side of the blood of all those who uh wish to actually you know who are undead or wish to become undead and even uh such a person as lady ilmaro who is considered considered by herself to be the queen of the dead mm. this island itself is uh known to be part of uh of, of, of there are many, many people who live on the island who actually are a part of that particular religion Okay. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah, we got some uh we got some undead tendencies going on here. Interesting. And, uh, yeah. Should we 
And uh, the ship that attacked us from uh, Ted Red's analysis with his lore spell, the chamber is involved, which uh, kind of revolves around allegedly Vol. So, you know, th there's some pieces lining up here that we need to pay attention to. We might be dealing with a, a, an undead presence trying to counteract what we're trying to do here. Interesting. What was Interesting. the invitation again? Kala, do you still yeah. have that invitation? I do. The invitation said... Dear Bjorn, a family feast, a fancy feast. We are cordially inviting you to a dinner at Castle Wishbone. It's Wishbone. Fourth of Ron. I'm not sure what date that is. What date is it now? Does anybody know the date? Do we know the date? Like, anybody keep track have of a that? Calendar on them. This was actually, you know, you, you kind of noticed from the date that this was probably, you don't know, maybe a couple of weeks ago that this was probably, he was invited maybe a week or two ago. Oh, okay. So this is a past thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, throw on the remember floor. that the, uh, the, 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 the kittens just told you that he's been missing approximately. So he must have went there. He must have oh. went to this thing. So maybe we should go there. That might not be a bad start. Does the anybody only... else want to uh, try to uh, roll some sort of lore check by any chance? Sure. Lore. I'll do it. I'm going to roll it. Call wants um, to do this. What's, what's my connections <clears throat> to the Blood of Val? Um, because that's my where I learned my necromancy. Um, would I have something to help us in this situation? Too sure. You might have Ooh. some knowledge, for sure. If nothing else, you might have some knowledge. This is probably not... A particular part of your religion that you would that know much about as far as you know have connections to she would probably have some knowledge of this part of the religion so would I do an intelligence check or a religion a check. check religion Ooh, negative one eleven <laughs> okay well what you do know is that there is a group of the blood of Vol that is known as the blood sail elves and the blood sail elves live on this island and they uh, pursue undeath as the path of, uh, to eternal life. And some, you know, are okay to uh, just become vampires or undertake, you know, vows of the oath bound to become vampire spawn. Others, though, turn to be the, for the power of, the, of, of, of being a lich. Um, so that power, of course, you know, isn't a, a gift that can be given. So a lot of people will try to uh, become liches and go through the entire, you know, lives trying to pursue that path so you know that this this the sect does exist it's not one that the the traditional line of the blood of all that religion the traditional part path of the religion would actually condone um but you know that this part does exist and that these these blood cell elves actually do follow um this tradition out here um on this island there are quite a few that do and you also happen to uh have a little bit of knowledge of the name so on on the on the uh, invitation so they ariel so ariel is like one of three sisters who um is an active members of this um group called the grim and these sisters are also part of the ones who are trying again to you know kind of prolong their lives and become undead and um Soleil is the most politically active of the sisters and um, they kind of all share one body. There's like three sisters that kind of all kind of share a body. And uh, this particular sister, when she is in control of this body, is, is, is prone to have a lot of, um, kind of parties, salons and galas, um, and, and kind of invites people over. And, um, uh, you know, especially like, you know, captains, blood cell captains and other interesting individuals. Um, and if they uh, prove to be entertaining, you know, they will, you know, of course, be allowed to uh, stay around and uh, possibly even join the undead. If they are uh, boring, then, well, you know, usually they don't make the night through the, make it through the night. Ooh, interesting. 
But if you don't accept an invitation from Ariel, then uh, um, from from Soleil, then it's it's generally you know not a good thing either because you're probably just not going to make it at all. It's very very dangerous. So this is what you know about invitation yes. sisters. It's off your religion. So, so are they like Siamese triplets? No, it's just more like they possess. They each possess. It's like they're kind of you know their dominance Priest. kind of possess Priest. the body at a particular time. Oh, um, three, three spirits. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Three spirits that kind of take over the body. So when we meet this individual, we have to be uh, make sure we know which sister we're talking to. What I get from that. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Right. Although Bjorn may have been a jerk. He was still a friend at one point, so I think we need to go find him. Maybe he refused the invitation. Uh, maybe, but we still need to find him. Did Bjorn have any kids or babies? Did was, was there a baby Bjorn? <laughs> I don't I really think there was. there was, but I haven't been around in a while, so there might be a baby Bjorn. <gasps> I want to oh, find that out. I mean, I've been running around with you clowns for how long now? Yeah, it's been like a year. We've been friends for a long time. Too long. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's possible. I think that no. should be our next quest, to find Bjorn and baby Bjorn. Um, should we go to the location of this letter? Yeah, and I think that's going to be your next uh, adventure. Um, does anyone want to take the twist those with you? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Wait, cupboard? what flavor are they? In that room to see what's in I, that cupboard. Uh, would you like to zoom in on the uh, twist those for? Like Parmesan uh, something. What? Is it garlic? Oh, Parmesan, Parmesan garlic. garlic. I'm taking them. I'm taking them. I'm taking them. <laughs> Stay away from Wait a me. Minute. That's all. Wait a minute. That's my <laughs> fantasy football logo. <laughs> <laughs> I will share the bag with you. <laughs> yeah, they're they're Parmesan and garlic. Yep, we 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 should take these. <laughs> yeah. All right. It might. I have a feeling coming handy. Or or it would be the opposite. <laughs> Could be a bad idea. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh, I just thought of something. Yeah. Three sisters in one body, a bag of Twistos, triple eviction. <laughs> this is all sounding very painful. For whoever's getting evicted. Uh. Like, I don't know. Three souls in one body. Capone, you're not having flashbacks or anything, are you? I'm staying far away from that bag. <laughs> I have no affiliation with that bag. Uh, I'm just minding my business. I'm just minding my business. Stay out of the pantry. <laughs> staying out of the pantry, minding my business. Beckers abound, dig fire around, snorting magic and moon dust. Riding dragons flood, semen and blood, summons ready to bust. Crew of fucking beauties, we screw and do drugs all day and night. Healers and dealers, we that clap and fuck our way into the fight. Forge and I do electrify through my penis. I rise in full supply. I'm gonna rock, sure you can't deny. Risk it, rip, rap, lip by the name, let's go.